big wedding tomorrow, Mr. Cheese? No, no USAPL, no USAPL, no IAPB. It's a wedding this time? No, it's a wedding this time. I'm, I'm retired from the USAPL, retired from the IAPB. I'm a fucking wedding guy. Well, you gotta be a seatbelt guy now. I do think that I'm gonna have to postpone it until like 2 or 3 p.m. <coughs> which is fine. Like, I'm just gonna like right when the, like, right when it gets to the point where it's not storming anymore. Tomorrow I'm gonna do it, but I just, I mean, as soon as I can, and if it's raining like this, it's fine. But if it's like thundering and lightning, I can't, obviously can't. I'm just gonna like run out, tell Katrina to fucking shut the fuck up. <laughs> like I have to handle something, like just get out of the car. I'm literally gonna fucking just shove her on the ground, literally put a ring on her finger and tell her like it is what it is. Like it's just, it didn't go how I wanted. Just fucking deal with it, go home, smile to your family, it's fine. <laughs> like this is like the perfect cover. Like you can literally be if like- it, If it's just the right amount of rainy, then that's super epic. Can I get on one knee with these rocks or is it like- <laughs> um, But yeah, like I think I have to do it. And by the way, this is another thing that you didn't realize is that like probably the sun always rises like that way. If I do it in the morning, it has to be like shot from this way. Yeah, I mean, of course, the fuck am I gonna shoot it from this way? <laughs> On a boat? What kind yeah, of budget I, I do you think I didn't know, like, I, I don't know, dude. Like, I was thinking, like, you might have to go down there. <laughs> what? I mean, you have to hide. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, dude, you'll be, you can swim, right? I was gonna give you like, one of those longboards. All right, how far away can you be? I think no matter what the weather is, I'm basically, like, I'm gonna come out to like right here range, like midway yeah. through with her, I'm just gonna talk to her. I'm gonna tell her like, oh, like turn around, I got you something. I'm literally gonna go on one knee when she turns back around. Like, and I'm just gonna do that. I like that idea. And so then like, essentially, I'll make sure also look, when I text you and say any second, then you know, okay, like I'm about to do it at some very quickly. So like start the record. Also, train. I love you so much. <laughs> I, brought, I lied to you, I brought you here because I know that the beach is your favorite place. And I, I wanted to tell you that, you know, you're my best friend in the entire world. <laughs> I love you so much. Will you marry me? <laughs> 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 Yes. I love you so much. <laughs> you want to put it on? So obviously I'm not gonna be having any stems at this hour, otherwise I wouldn't be able to go to sleep. So when it comes to my pre-workout today, I'm just dealing two scoops of stem-free euphoria. Now because at the moment the flavor is the same for the stem version and the non-stem version, it's an organic flavor that's naturally sweetened with no sucralose, uses stevia and monk fruit. To get the best taste out of this, what you need to do is regardless of how much you're taking, even though I do recommend taking two scoops, have a large amount of water, something like this, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depending on how you want to fine tune it, but make sure it's cold. Put in some ice cubes. Because with how this is formulated, there's a huge difference in how it tastes if you're mixing it with a small amount of water that's room temperature or lukewarm versus a lot of water that's very, very cold. Huge difference in your experience of the taste. But for those of you who still really, really like that super sweet classic pre-workout, BCAA, super low sweet punchness to your products, this month I'm actually gonna have a new flavor of Euphoria come out, which is gonna be strawberry watermelon, and it tastes absolutely fantastic. So be on the lookout for that. <sighs> what the fuck? Dude, this is a huge ass jug, like. I mean, just exactly. I have to drink the whole thing you to get a small cup. Whole thing ah. right now. Oh. No, there's actually this. This bottle is a gift to you. It's brand new. It's Can a big you? fancy glass bottle from Amazon. It's got oh, two okay. scoops in here. It's iced, premium as fuck. Ten grams of citrulline, Jesus. four grams of glycerol, all the tyrosine you'd ever need. And uh, so I have no excuse to not look big. Yeah. Also, how's if this you thing look small, up, it's just uh, you. Yeah. Sure. Well, I am small, so true. But fuck, this is dope. How's that camera all lit up and shit? Fucking pitch it's, dark. This is fucking A7S, and just these subtle lights right here is enough to illuminate. It's just the right amount. Yeah, it's dark. <laughs> you filled this up all the way to the top. It's just... You probably already know this, but I realize that when it comes to like taking pre's, or especially things that are like dominant and like uh, mm -hmm. pump stuff, especially like citrulline and especially glycerol, 
you want to drink it with like a shit ton of water, maybe like an hour or two before your workout, because it actually takes some time for that like nitric, nitric oxide shit to kind of like kick in. So like if you drink it right before you train, you'll get that nasty pump at the end of your workout. But if you drink it one or two hours before, you just immediately are fucking inflated. Where's my size small stringer at? Oh, it's in the, it's in the trunk. Also, Damn. just the workout footage. Can you send me all the footage? Yes, I can. Yeah. I don't want to have a huge fight like last time. <laughs> I didn't take your footage. Yeah, I almost wanted to kill you then. Fucking light. I love this. Is this, like, very similar to the original, like... It's, it's very real? similar to the original Attilus one, but modified and revised for perfection. Yeah. I, I think the small is good, yeah? Because yeah, it's it more like a way. meter. For sure, yeah, like that beater, like tightish, like yeah. kind of look. It's been so long since I've trained this late, and it's interesting because my natural preference or inclination is to train this late, like back in high school, it just back when we were younger. More together, it just breeds the late night fucking degenerate sleep schedule training. Yeah, so I mean, I train in the morning now just because it's like more like efficient for the day, oh, but yeah. the better workouts are often gotten at night. All right, so we decided to do a. Um, voiceover for this training footage because it's probably why do you got the clip of me putting the bar on the damn bench it, just, it looks cinematic you got to build a story oh, this dude. kid doing in the back with that fucking book he's doing something yeah. but um but yeah i mean i don't feel like doing like some fancy edit a bunch of handheld stuff this is just like our workout and um see it's been so it's, it's, like, here's the thing, yeah, so oh. it's been so long since i've like started like any type of bench or pushing movement with like 25 pounds aside and then for the next set i do um 115 which is like another 10 on each side and i'm also not touching my chest because it's something i'm experimenting with lately is because i'm having like some difficulties with my shoulder some injuries in my ac joint so i'm like all right let me try to like shorten my range of i did it because you were doing it i just felt like i had to do it but i don't do that yeah i mean i'm not saying that you necessarily should do it this way it's just something that i'm like experimenting with to see if it could take some stress away from my shoulders are you but prescribing 200,000 people will never touch their chest again <laughs> basically all it's right. a prescription you must follow but um I mean, basically, so I mean, I haven't talked much about my training in my past few videos, but I'm essentially doing like legs, push, pull, no squats, no deadlifts, nothing that really stresses out my spine. And I'm progressing like extremely, extremely slowly. Like I'm purposely taking my time. So even though if I have, you know, the strength to do like a heavier weight and more sets, more reps, more volume, I'm not doing that. I'm holding myself back and just doing slow and incremental, you know, progressive overload because I want not to develop any pain in any region. But basically... This is a late night workout, as you guys saw us ranting in the car. Uh, we didn't take any, you know, stims. We just took, you know, euphoria with the pump, no caffeine. And I actually haven't trained, I think, for the both of us. When was the last time you trained this late? Fuck, it's been a while. I usually don't train this late at all. I, I usually train at, like, yeah, like midday, early day. So it was definitely super off. And I trained just the day before. Yeah, so, I mean, I was supposed to do chest today, but then Dylan had to do back. So we kind of did, like, good, though. Uh, that's a good looking 225. That's good looking. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little. Ugly. How many did you do, like ten? Do you remember how much you did? I did. I think we just did like three sets of eight on that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, three sets of eight. We started an incline, on incline doing that. Yeah. But yes, I mean, this isn't like a typical typical workout for me because I'm just doing like a hybrid of like push and pull. I, I would have done a uh, push today, but me and Dylan wanted to train together. So. So what do you hit for legs then? Legs is it's the it's it's the pitch shark. It's like that. Squat I have thing a pitch shark in my basement. basement. You do you actually? I actually do. In my gym, yeah. my basement, you got to come now. How would you um, how would you say your training has evolved from being an overweight, high blood pressure, psychopathic narcissist that is in well, love with iron? To I would who say you are now? it's adapted massively. I now basically train five times a week. I train Monday through Friday. I take Saturday and Sundays off. I do legs once a week, push twice, pull twice. And yeah, that's pretty much how I go about it. I don't do any deadlifts. I squat like once a month, but you know, I still do heavy compound type lifts, like, you know, leg press, hack squat, things of that nature. But yeah, just not fucking worth it anymore for me to deadlift and squat. Cause I feel like I've hit such a pinnacle, like kind of deadlifted like 685 pounds more than you. De uh, uh, squat. With straps. I mean, oh bullshit. shit. I don't know what happened. But uh, yeah, and then 585 squat, all, like all those numbers, like super cool, had my fun doing that. And I love coaching people doing it, but I just simply put like not worth the stress on my body anymore. My goal is just more maintain the amount of muscle mass that I have now, my physique and yeah, just not, and that's kind of what I do. It's interesting for me, like 
Am I gonna start like, twitching out? Did I sometimes I start getting real twitchy? You're doing this weird shit where you're like one shoulder was like yeah, I start higher, getting these little twitches and I'm shit. I'm telling you, I get stuck getting a little twitchy. But I'm at the point now See, where it's getting twitchy. It's a little twitchy. But um, like I personally, I would be okay I if I could never squat and deadlift again. That honestly wouldn't really really be the end of the world. Like I would be like more or less like indifferent, like neutral to that. Yo, can we talk about how you got 80 pounds in there just to look good? And I'm actually doing 160, getting some actual be, because some actual I'm, work I'm, in. I'm, I'm I'm taking my time. I'm doing my 80 slow. pounds, Dave. 80 pounds freshman year of high school, dude. <laughs> you were doing 80 pounds freshman year of high school. Yeah, with good um, form, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, wait, wait for the camera to go back on me. Look, yeah, but, but, but wait for it to go respect back. Respect the cleanliness of this form. It's yeah, but respect proper, the double the weight. Wait clean. for it. Three, two. <laughs> One. Oh, you cut me out. All right. Well, actually, you know, look, look, look some weird did, shit going that's on a there. Nice string you're you just see some a... weird action that I just did right before I did. I movement. did, but honestly, you gotta cut that out. But yes, that stringer it is was, phenomenal. The olive green of that stringer definitely took away from any types of weird you shoulder fuck ups on your face. Is doing, dude, I get real weird, twitchy, and all like, my or something. I, I mean, yeah, like honestly, something happens to me when I start training. But yes, no, these stringers are absolutely awesome. It's like just. A, a better version of the old Attila stringers that we literally used to love and fucking wear every single day. If I had like a million of those, I would wear those every day in small, the small size. Yeah. Which I mean, they do. I would recommend sizing down if you get that, because I personally would never wear a small in anything. And the small in that stringer like fit really good. Yeah. I mean, I'm usually like large and extra large yeah. in like most stuff, but like with this stringer specifically, I think both of us during this workout, we were wearing a size small. So for me, like I'll either wear like a size small or medium, like depending on like the, the bagginess or like the, the contour towards the body I want for the day. But, um, but yeah, the stringer was basically designed from the Attila stringer, which is like one of the best stringers, like in our opinion, we used to wear them all the time. So it has a very similar shape, but like, you know, made to be, yeah ever so slightly better but this machine right here just in general i've been using way more machines lately because for the longest time my overall training philosophy was primarily like free weight which there's nothing wrong with and i still do that <laughs> to some degree but i just you know i'm uh, experimenting and enjoying the joint sparing isolation movements such as this yeah. i remember back in the day you hated i literally judged you people legitimately were like oh my gosh like this that, guy's people. on a machine he deserves to just fucking <laughs> leave the gym never be allowed back in this gym again yeah, but um, it, one thing that I'm also doing is I mentioned this before, like you saw like on that chest press, like Dylan did it normal, like two arms at a time for me with some movements, it's so strange. Like I prefer to do one arm because it just feels better for my back. Like, it, it doesn't bother it as much. A lot of people feel that way, David. Yeah. I'd I'm say. one of those people. I am also one of those people. You got literally three stacks on there. It's about oh, the time. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I got four on there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, my previous mindset was definitely extreme, like extremist. Like I'd go all out with the gym, super heavy, snap all my joints up, abuse one, three, dimeth pre-workout, and just go to a period of like one to two weeks of like depressed remission until I can, you know, charge back up again to like start training. So now I'm just focusing on that, you know, calm, responsible consistency and the voiceover is over. <laughs> It's like I woke up from a nightmare It's like I woke up from a nightmare It's like I woke up from a nightmare Because I finally got away from you And I ain't never going back there if it's the last thing I'll ever do But now it's R.I.P Because it's over and you're dead to me You just a memory that I can't break But I can't shake the ghost that you left behind here What do you have in common with those two men on the wall? All two of us use. We're, we're both Austrian. In the International Federation of Bodybuilding, oh, you guys have IFB a card. We're both for bodybuilders, me and Arnold. We are. And, and Ron. We are